In this video, we'll talk about the peripheral tolerance. This is a high yield topic for USMLE part one. Imagine the situation when your immune cell attacks your own body instead of protecting it. And this kind of scenario leads to autoimmune disorder. But thanks to our tolerance mechanism, immune tolerance work like a safeguard mechanism to prevent this kind of autoreactive cells and thereby protecting our body. But sometimes this tolerance mechanism also go wrong in autoimmune disorders. That's why understanding these tolerance mechanism is crucial. There are two broad kind of tolerance mechanism when it comes to immune system. And this is subdivided into central tolerance and peripheral tolerance. For both T cell and B cell, there are central and peripheral tolerances. In this video, we are going to focus more on the peripheral tolerance. Now just let's talk about the T cells and try to understand what happens during central tolerance. Central tolerance occurs in the thymus. In the thymus, due to negative selection, the autoreactive T cells would eventually die. Any T cell in the thymus which recognize the MHC with very high affinity eventually receives a death signal and they are eliminated via the mechanism of self-tolerance. But some of the cases in rare occasion, these cells can evade the central tolerance mechanism. And that is why there is a backup mechanism or a second double check mechanism known as peripheral tolerance. In peripheral tolerance, one of the key player is regulatory T cell, which can suppress this kind of autoreactive T cells. Also, there are mechanisms known as clonal energy and peripheral deletion, which helps in elimination of these autoreactive cells and protecting our body from the harmful effect of auto antibodies or autoreactive cell types. So when self-reactive T cells escape the periphery, peripheral tolerance ensures they are deleted or at least they become inert. So peripheral tolerance, it's like a checkpoint. You can imagine this entire tolerance system as a two-way pass password checking system that you have faced in your Gmail account maybe. So first of all, there are T regulatory cells that sends inhibitory cytokines such as IL-10, TGF-beta and that is recognized by the autoreactive T cells and they become less active. Second, there is also cytokine deprivation. That means T regulatory cell also have IL-2 receptors and IL-2 is important for the proliferation of any kind of activated T cells. So it's kind of like they eat the food of the autoreactive T cells and thereby they are ultimately leading to inactivation of these T cells. There are a bunch of negative co-stimulatory receptors such as CTLA-4, LAG-3 on the T regulatory cells, which can modulate the response of antigen presenting cell as well. And it can inhibit the antigen presenting cell, thereby indirectly preventing the autoreactive T cell activation. Lastly, T regulatory cell can also secrete perforin and granzyme, which can trigger the apoptosis of autoreactive T cells. All these things ensures autoreactive T cells does not sustain in the periphery or in the circulation. Now, the key important part is clonal energy. What really happens due to autoreactive T cell and APC interactions, there are many negative co-stimulatory signals such as CTLA-4, PD-1, all of these receptors lead to an energy of these T cells. Clonal means only particular cell type among a subpopulation of T cells would be affected. In this case, you can see only few of the T cells of a particular or specific against a particular antigen is affected. That simply means when these clone of T cells would be further active or would be further stimulated by a dendritic cell or any antigen presenting cell, the likelihood of activation is very low. So activation probability would be low. Eventually, energy related genes would be upregulated, which make them more unresponsive towards any kind of stimulation. So they are not dead, but they are totally docile and inactive. Point to be noted that the energy mechanism is very selective. Only one subpopulation of T cells 
would be affected and this is very antigen specific another particular cd4 positive t cells which is specific for another different antigen maybe a foreign antigen is not affected by this mechanism and that brings out the selectivity of energy mechanism as well now when these cells does not uh, get enough amount of co-stimulatory signal and it doesn't get enough amount of IL-2 mediated induction, the autoreactive T cell would eventually upregulated uh, pro-apoptotic genes and downregulate anti-apoptotic genes. So the balance between pro and anti-apoptotic factor would be altered in these cells, which would eventually lead to a destruction via apoptosis. It's also possible that perforin granzyme mediated pathway and FAS ligand and FAS mediated pathway can trigger the apoptosis response. All these things are still an active site of discussion. Now, what happens to the B cell? B cell generally gets activated by T cells. So there are two important interaction, TCRMHC2 interactions and CD40 and CD40 ligand interaction that triggers the B cell activation. So if you want to learn more about B cell activation, click on the link above. So once the B cell is activated, they would expand clonally and grow, in, grow and proliferate in number. Eventually these activated T cell, B cells would undergo processes like affinity maturation and class switching. This would lead to the production or differentiation of plasma cells, which would secrete a specific subtype or isotype of antibody. Now, in case of uh, peripheral tolerance, since the T cells are somehow inactivated by various mechanisms, so T cell cannot provide strong signals for the B cell activation because T cell is already energic or maybe they died or maybe they are not, uh, they, they have received negative signals. So once the T cell mediated stimulation cannot happen for the B cell, B cell is not really activated, differentiation doesn't happen, antibody production is not happening. That means this kind of mechanism prevents autoantibody generation and thereby safeguarding our body from the harmful effect of autoantibodies. But in many, uh, many diseases, this kind of peripheral tolerance mechanism goes wrong and that increases the chance of autoimmune disorders. In different videos, we'll talk about autoimmune disorders. But let me tell you, just like T cells, B cell can also undergo energy or apoptosis and this is how overall uh, peripheral to tolerance work. There could be energy, there could be apoptosis and there could be negative stimulation. I hope this was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook. Link is provided in the description. You can support our channel using super thanks. You can pay via Paytm, PayPal or UPI. Support us on Patreon. See you in next video.